Olá, bem-vindos à TV SBU na cobertura do 15º Congresso Internacional de Urooncologia aqui em São Paulo. Hoje eu tenho a honra de estar com o Dr. Stephen Friedland, Professor of Urology of Senior Science in Los Angeles. Thank you very much for for being here. Thank you for accepting. It's an honor for us. No, it's exciting to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. And well, uh, I would like to talk about Embark trial. You were yeah. one of the PIs of the first author of the Embark trial. And I think it's a game changer for us, for specific the high risk patients with biochemical recurrence, with no uh, intent of curative. Uh, treatment. So tell me a little bit about the patients that were recruited for Embark trial and the great results the study have. Yeah, no, exactly as you said, it's, it's biochemical recurrence. So had surgery, had radiation, and it didn't work. And then hopefully they're getting salvage treatment. We had a very nice session here just talking <laughs> about that. So hopefully they got very aggressive salvage. And if that didn't work, we're now ready for systemic therapy. Again, it's high risk, so PSA doubling time less than nine months um, was the criteria. PSA had to be above one post-surgery, nadir plus two post-radiation. And the question was, can we give intensified ADT, hitting the androgen receptor even stronger, and can that delay metastasis or death? So that's what we studied was enzalutamide combination, enzalutamide plus ADT versus ADT alone, and then double blind fashion. And then there was enzalutamide monotherapy as a third arm. Which is completely new. Something completely new, interesting. We're still kind of processing how to put that into our, our mindset. And then the prime, you know, there's a lot of unique aspects to embark. One is once they went on therapy, If they got a good PSA response at week 36, they could actually stop the therapy. Uh, and well, the treatment holiday, that the is treatment called. Holiday, exactly. And then it brings back the, the, the issue of intermittent ADT. Correct. So but in a different setting of metastatic, which was discussed, but in a non-metastatic patient now. Correct. So it's, it's not classic intermittent intermittent is you're yes, on you're off you're on you're off and the, This, it's just one holiday as just you explained one holiday. exactly I know. so now it'll be interesting to see in the real world do people do multiple on off but the trial was one holiday only okay and after patient uh will have a rise psa the treatment Come, come back. They went back on the same treatment they were originally assigned And to. And no more holidays. No And more so holidays. So continuous ADT. And then they would stay on the therapy until they develop metastasis or death. Yes, and, and the results shown that even in the group of enzalutamide monotherapy, well, it was better than ADT alone, which was a, a completely great news from our patients from the perspective of quality of life. Correct. No, I mean, the enzalutamide combination reduced metastasis or death by 58%. Really dramatic. The curve starts to separate at 18 months with monotherapy, 37% reduction in metastasis or death. Curves also starting to separate at 18 you know, months. Really, really impressive. Hit almost all the secondary outcomes, delaying PSA progression, delaying time to metastasis, next treatment. Overall survival, we're still following. It's trending in the right direction. Great. So it's great to hear. Looking forward to impressive. the new results. Yeah. But uh, in the group of enzalutamide monotherapy, uh, despite the preservation of quality of life for these patients, uh, we have uh, a side effect of gynecomastia yeah. that will uh, affect almost uh, about 44% percent of the yeah, patients it's a sizable and uh, how could we manage these patients with because it's going to be uh, a very common side effects in this group of patients that opt for uh, enzalutamide monotherapy yeah so a, a couple quick thoughts before I, we jump into that so the monotherapy showed the same overall rates of side effect as combination okay so it wasn't less toxic it's different so you actually had a lot I less see. hot flashes um, you actually had less fractures, but you get more and better preserved sexual function, which could be very important to, to some patients. But you do see more breast issues, gynecomastia, enlargement, nipple pain. So uh, I think one of the more effective ways we think is radiation to the breast before you start the therapy. It has to be before. Okay. 
Okay. One dose, two at the most, radiating to the breast. We know back in bicalutamide, 150 milligram day, that was very effective. We, we don't know if it works for enzalutamide induced, but it should, it makes sense. It wasn't pre-specified in the trial, so we didn't tell people everyone should have their breast irradiated. It was up to the clinician to decide. Most of them, very few did. Um, now, do you recommend this for I the do. patients? For, you, it's, uh, so for all the patients that are going to decide for enzalutamide monotherapy, you recommend correct. a prophylactic radi radiation therapy? Correct. I mean, mm -hmm. almost 50% of patients are going to get breast issues on enzalutamide monotherapy. The radiation, there's almost no side effects, very well tolerated. Two it, dose? No reason One? not to do it. Oh, okay. I mean, and what about the sequencing? Well, these patients are in the setting that we will only have ABT, but in the non-metastatic castration resistance prostate cancer, we had the addition of enzalutamide already approved. So if this patient used ABT and enzalutamide in a previous setting, and now in a hormone sensing non-metastatic prostate cancer, how would we sequence these patients in a progression? Yeah, so the, in the in the well, in the in the little mind you were telling there was no castration resistance setting because they are not castrate, castrated. Right. So, uh, you know, for the combination, if you do enzalutamide plus ADT, you will often get to non-metastatic castration resistant. Sometimes it goes straight to metastatic. By the time the yes. PSA starts to rise, you already have metastasis. If it's non-metastatic, the only thing proven is enzalutamide or, or APA or DARA. So I wouldn't switch, I'd stay on it. Once they get to MCRPC, I don't think going to an abiraterone or another AR targeted is the right answer. I think it's chemotherapy, maybe lutetium, PSMA, maybe radium. And then in the we US, are already in the metastatic In the MCRPC. Yes. So for the monotherapy, it's interesting because they're not castrate. Yes. So when they fail, they're not castration resistant. I would would say, you add AD, ADT? I, I would, but I mean, I think the biology is they're not castration resistant, but I think yeah. they are resistant to AR targeting. So I don't think, and we heard some talks yesterday, you do you start ADT, it doesn't really work well. So I think you, you try it just because, you know, you got to give it a chance, but I don't think you're going to get much benefit at all. And then quickly, you now can Perfect. call it CRPC, and then we're back to the same likely chemo, radium, lutetium, ciprosyl okay, T. And, and if the other the options US. that we yeah. already have. Correct. Very interesting, very exciting news, and we're looking forward to the new results. Thank you very much for being here with us, Sharon well, and Lloyd. Thanks so much for having me. I always learn very much with you, from That's, you. It's, it's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Continue acompanhando a TV na SBU na cobertura do 15º Congresso Internacional de Urologia aqui em São Paulo. Não se esqueçam de se inscreverem no canal do Portal da Urologia para continuarem acompanhando as atualizações.